Weeds! Everybody hates them. Well, maybe not everybody, but everybody that we know hates them. So what can you do about them? As a homeowner or as a provider, they're always going to be an issue in any kind of open environment like you have with your lawn. So how do you actually prevent them? How do you kill them? What can be done? There's actually a few things and Picture Perfect is here to give you some pointers, tell you what we do, talk a little bit about what all that terminology surrounding weeds is, and make sure that you're going to be covered for the spring weeds and the spring weed control that you need this season. Before we go any further, stop right now. You know what to do at this point if you've seen any of our other videos. Pause here, go subscribe to our channel, ring the bell to make sure that you're staying up to date on the awesome content that we're gonna continue having coming your way. I'll be here, I'll wait, just come back when you're done and we'll get into everything you need to know about weeds. So at Picture Perfect, one of the big things that we hear from everybody is, what do I need to know about spring weed control? Is it something that I need to be involved in as a homeowner, or what products are you putting down as a provider that are guaranteeing weeds for your fertilization program? There are some things that are kind of excessive in terms of actual knowledge. It's a really complex part of any fertility company in terms of that weed control. There's a lot of different products out there, but there are some basic things that are really good to know as a homeowner, as a provider, just to make sure that everybody's on the same page and has the same idea of all of that terminology floating around. What I'm going to go over with you in this video has to do with the weeds that we're seeing in the RVA area in terms of what is common and what might be a little bit more difficult to treat, as well as the way that we are treating all of those weeds. So we're going to go over things like pre and post emergent weed control, as well as lawn renovations that might be needed toward the end of the season to give you kind of a clean slate. Outside of that weed identification and the products being used generally to treat those weeds, we're also going to go a little bit over what home homeowners should be doing to maximize on the service that they're investing in that covers weed control to make sure that everything is running smoothly and that they're not accidentally doing anything that's making weeds a bigger issue than they need to be in the first place. So while every yard is different and there might be some weeds in your specific area that you don't see as much in other parts of RVA, we generally see kind of a consistent group of weeds that are really, really common and frequent in the lawns that we take care of, especially if it's a newer property that hasn't had as good or consistent of weed control until we started working with them this season. There are a lot of weeds on that list, some of them more common than others, but there are two basic ways that they're categorized to make it a little bit easier to talk shop about them and to better identify effective products for their control. The first category of weeds that we talk about are broadleaf weeds. As their name would suggest, these are weeds that have a broader leaf than the blade of grass that you normally see and desire in your lawn. Broadleaf weeds include dandelions, clovers, henbit, that sort of thing that really stands out because it looks so much different from your grass. Some of these weeds might flower. Obviously, we all know what dandelions look like, even clovers in terms of that poof of white that's at the end of the plant. But they can grow and not flower at different parts of the season, so it's a good idea when you have time as a homeowner to just Google and look up a little bit about what those actual weeds look like. I've got some pictures scrolling up here of different ones with labels, so you can always use this video as a starting point. And if you see something listed that you're not sure what it is and you've never seen it in your yard, you can go ahead and do your own homework as well. Or if there's something that we're talking about here that you do see in your yard, send us a picture. We always love it when our clients take a picture of a weed that they're seeing, email it to us or text it to us and just say, hey, what is this? If we know, we'll give you an answer right off the bat. We'll tell you what it is, if it's covered, when it shows up, what you can do. Or if we don't know, we've got a great network of other providers that we can contact and see if they have any ideas so that we can make sure that you're getting the answer that you need. The other classification of common weeds that we see are grassy weeds. These are weeds different from broadleaf weeds in that they look a little bit more like an actual grass and they're closer in relationship in terms of their physiology and actual biological title. The most common grassy weed is going to be crabgrass. Crabgrass is that cluster of crabby looking grass that spreads out before it kind of grows up a little bit and it really really likes the heat. So this is a weed that starts showing up late spring through summer 
and dies off on its own at the end of the season. Other grassy weeds are a little bit more difficult to control, but not as common as crabgrass, and these include things like goosegrass, bahia grass, Dallas grass, Bermuda grass, quack grass, and a lot of other ones. The biggest thing that you need to know when it comes to grassy weeds is if they're treated by a fertilization program, because not all of them can be, and if not, what the other options are. Now, another thing to consider under the umbrella of whether or not it's a broadleaf weed or a grassy weed is what the life cycle of the plant is like. Annual weeds complete their life cycle within a calendar year. So they grow from a seed, do their thing as an adult, spread more seeds, and then they die within a calendar year, within a season, completing their life cycle fully. Then the next season, if you see that same weed popping up, it's not the same plant, it's just the next generation. These weeds are pretty easy to prevent and control because so long as you're able to hit them and nip them in the bud before they reach that adult life cycle where they're reproducing and putting more seeds into the environment, you're going to see your population get less and less each year. Perennial plants, or ones that live for at least a couple of years and they go dormant possibly and then come back, those can be a little bit more tricky because they're coming from the same root foundation and the same plant multiple times as they continue to release seeds and create new plants. Whether or not a plant is a broadleaf weed or grassy weed, if it has an annual life cycle or is perennial, the important thing to know is that spring is going to be a key time to address them because spring is when all of the developing winter weeds and all of the upcoming summer weeds kind of overlap. So we're going to talk about what exactly spring weed control entails and what you need to be knowing about it. Spring is king when it comes to weed control because there's so much overlap and there's a lot of potential to be able to effectively control the weeds that are going to be coming up during the growing season. There are a lot of different products out there, but the two classifications of products that we're most concerned with and that you should probably know about are pre-emergent weed control and post-emergent weed control. So I'm going to explain the difference on that right now. Pre-emergent weed control is pretty cool because it prevents weeds from coming up before you even have to see them. When the weed seed is down in the soil, it's just waiting for the right opportunity, the right soil temperatures, the right level of moisture to germinate and become an adult plant. During that early, early stage germination and growing process though, there are a lot of biochemical reactions taking place within the seed so that it can develop properly. Just like with any animal, human, anything like that, there's a lot involved in that. The way that pre-emergent weed control basically works is it halts those enzyme processes that are important for early stage root development so that that weed never has the opportunity to break above ground and become visible. Pre-emergent weed control isn't a perfect science. It has a lot of influence from the weather, um, if a squirrel comes through and digs the ground, and because there's a lot of different products, there's not always going to be a 100% blanket success when it comes to pre-emergent weed control. That being said, it makes a huge difference. An area that's treated successfully in the spring with pre-emergent weed control is going to have a much lower rate of weeds in the summer and early fall than it would if it was just left to its own devices. The big thing that we're targeting with pre-emergent weed control in our program for the first two applications of the year during the spring are going to be the occurrences of crabgrass as well as some of those standard broadleaf weeds that we were talking about earlier. Because crabgrass doesn't really start to germinate yet during the spring when we're doing weed control the heaviest, it's really important to be able to prevent it. And because it's an annual weed, it's pretty easy to hit those seeds before they germinate. Post-emergent weed control, on the other hand, is kind of your safety net when it comes to taking care of weeds that either broke through pre-emergent or weren't able to be prevented so that they're under control and killed off as adult visible weeds. This is the other thing that we're putting down pretty heavily in the spring and in the early summer with the first three applications of fertilizer that we do, and as needed later stages just based on if there's anything still breaking through or anything that needs to be selectively treated. Like pre-emergent weed control, there are a lot of different projects out there, but the most important thing is to make sure that all of these weed controls are selective so that they're not doing any damage to your fescue. 
I'm picture perfect. We have worked really, really hard to test these products and find not only the ones that are the most effective, but also the ones that we can use a lower rate of so that it's a little bit safer, not just for the environment, but also for the pets and people that are going to be crossing through those areas. Anytime that we do an application like that, we always let our clients know that we're going to be out there and what we're going to be applying so that they can know how much time they need to spend off the lawn to let the product properly dry and be safe and effective as well. So now that we know that post-emergent weed control is killing off any adult plants that are starting to pop up and pre-emergent weed control is preventing future generations from occurring, we need to talk about how there are some weeds that aren't controlled as well by the products that are most accessible for a typical program like that. At the end of the day, unfortunately, just like in a lot of other industries, if something is harder to do, it's going to be a little bit more expensive to do. So there are some weeds out there like wild violets, nuts edge, Bermuda grass that we don't want in lawns and are seen in our area, but because of their nature, they're a lot harder to treat and a lot of products aren't able to cover them just based on their biology. As a result, the products that do treat them are a lot more exclusive and more expensive so rather than having to increase the rates for all of our clients and build it into the program, we leave that as a selective option so that you can decide whether or not it's something that you want to be covered for based on your needs and your budget. This again is where it comes into play that we really appreciate when our clients talk to us about the weeds that they're seeing and make sure that it's something that they're covered for. If there's a weed in your yard that isn't covered by our standard program, we do have options to treat it. It's just probably something that is going to be a little bit extra to pay for. There are different options there as well. We can do selective treatments for things as well as do just a total lawn renovation where we kill it off and start from scratch based on exactly what the population of the fescue is and again what your personal preferences and budget are. The biggest thing you need to know here is that whether it's spring weed control or later season weed control, there is a coverage option and the vast majority of weeds are already going to be controlled as part of your Picture Perfect program. So if you've made it this far, and I know this is a pretty long video with me just sitting here talking, but if you're still with me, so far we've talked about what weeds we're talking about with classifications of broadleaf versus grassy weeds. We've talked about what pre-emergent and post-emergent weed controls are so that we can figure out exactly when it's being put down and why. But the big thing that I want all of our clients to know about, as well as other providers, so that they can know what their clients need to know about, is what can be done in between applications and in between visits from a professional company to reduce weeds. For the most part, a homeowner should not have to go out behind their professional company and apply their own weed control as an ancillary option to make sure that their coverage is complete. The only times that you as a homeowner should really be applying weed control on top of what your company is doing is if you have any of those weeds we just talked about that aren't necessarily treated by the standard program and you've elected to go for a DIY option. Outside of that, for the typical things like crabgrass, dandelions, clovers, anything like that, you're covered. There might be a few here and there, but for the most part, it's not anything that you really have to worry about and shouldn't have to invest in extra things for. So instead of worrying about that, what you can do as a homeowner to make sure that weeds are kept under control is be sure that you are mowing and watering properly. Not only are these two things extremely important to the health of your fescue, but they're also directly related to the occurrence of weeds because by mowing and watering right, you're making the ideal conditions for your fescue you rather than for those weeds. When we talk about mowing right, with turf type tall fescue we mean mowing tall. It's called tall fescue because it likes to stand tall. Most of those weeds are pretty low growing that we've been talking about, so they want the fescue cut short so that they can get more sunlight. If you're keeping your fescue tall, not only is it going to be more healthy and it's going to stay thicker and crowd those weeds out, but it's going to shade its roots, keeping it healthy during the summer, and preventing those weeds from getting a foothold in the first place. Where watering is concerned, you want to make sure that you are watering appropriately, consistently, and to the right amount. It doesn't really matter 
how long you water because everybody's timing system and water pressure is different. So a yard could be getting half an inch of water in 10 minutes while their neighbor is getting half an inch in 30 minutes. You want to measure your water because it's perfect for fescue to get about an inch and a half of water a week on top of standard rainfall. Now the weather that we saw in 2018 for example was way beyond standard rainfall so you don't want to put an inch and a half on top of three inches from a gully washer but you do want to make sure that you're watering consistently for the soil to stay soft and mildly saturated. A yard that's properly watered, again, is not only going to have healthy fescue, but it's going to reduce the dry conditions or overly wet conditions that a lot of weeds like to take advantage of. If, you're, if your lawn is watered just right, you should have not only healthy grass, but really unhappy weeds. So that pretty much covers it where spring weed control is concerned. Weeds suck. They're going to be there. It's an open environment and anybody who guarantees you a completely weed free lawn is a liar. There's no such thing. Unless you live on the space shuttle out in outer space in a perfectly contained laboratory condition environment, you're going to have weeds. That being said, there is a lot that we as a Picture Perfect company can do and you as a Picture Perfect homeowner can do to greatly and massively reduce the occurrence of those weeds. If you have questions about them, let us know. Comment below. I love to hear your feedback and I want to know your thoughts. Message our office, call our office, hit up our team, whatever you need to do. Just make sure that any questions you have are answered before the 2019 season starts and that your lawn is staying picture perfect this season.